Brothers and sisters, Brother John, Watchman for that great day. Take your earbuds out. to bring to you today that I can only say that this is amazing that it was bought through a study that I started watching the other day uh, it was a video with um, Dr. Pigeon who um, has something to do with putting together the the book called The Cipher which is a, a of work that he's done. He is a, a law uh, graduate, law professor. At any rate, this man is is um, just an amazing uh, understander of the, the Hebrew, the Greek, and, and he's just full of information. But what I'm going to read to you is something that I wrote yesterday, and it was a study that took me pretty much all day yesterday and part of this morning um, since 6 o'clock. So I've got it up and I'm going to just read it like I wrote it. It's about the no-eyed laws, brothers and sisters. It's a furthering study on this. But wait till you get the, the connection that I'm seeing, all right? Um, so with that, I'll begin. The Noahide Laws, the timeline is now. Started doing this work March the 5th, 2019, yesterday, all day yesterday, and part of this morning. So let's make a comparison. Should we obey the Ten Commandments given to Moses at Sinai, written by the finger of God, or should we obey the seven laws of Noah, written by the Talmud-believing rabbinic Jews? First, I want you to notice that there are ten, ten commandments, and seven. And I'm not saying that there's anything necessarily connecting this, but it's just interesting how the numbers, ten commandments, seven Noahide laws, all right? So, we know that Daniel, chapter 7, verse 8, says, and it's talking about the, the little horn and the rising of the Antichrist, and this little horn, Antichrist, removes or uproots three of the ten, leaving seven. All right, now I'm not saying this has anything to do, we know the horns are, you know, the kings and the kingdoms and all this, all right, but it's, it's that, but the idea is just interesting because it's the little horn rises, which is talking about the Antichrist, and there's also ten um, uh, commandments of God, but there is seven, right? Just the numbers, the ten and the seven, right? So uprooting three of the commandments and putting in only seven, right? The thought, just a thought. So, but it does relate. What I'm, what I'm going to bring to you is this. It's clear, it's very clear. So that's let's continue. So. All right, a question. I'll ask you guys a question for you to answer. Do the Orthodox rabbis of Judaism today believe in Yeshua, in Jesus? No, no they don't. In fact, the Talmud teaches all kinds of foul and blasphemous things about Jesus, like he's in hell today, boiling in excrement. Come on, brothers and sisters. Following Jesus is graver than incest, etc., etc., etc. It's filled with these, these lies and these, these denials of Christ, all right? Jesus. Thank you, Father. The Talmud, as far as the believer is concerned, 
in Christ, the believer in Christ is concerned, is a blasphemous book. Concerning the question about the rabbis and knowing the answer, right now we know that they are they don't believe in Jesus Christ, right? So we read in John in first John two twenty two, who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is Christ? He is Antichrist. So we have the understanding of who we are talking about, the rabbinical teachers who are the heads of Israel. Uh, Israel's religious teaching, uh, the heads of Israel and religious teaching are according to uh, to John, the Antichrist. All right, according to First John, they deny Christ. Therefore, they are anti-Christ or in place of Christ. So now we know uh, in John five forty three that Jesus told us he came in his father's name and that the rabbis of his time received him not all right the same rabbis are the same ones of today brothers and sisters they're not receiving Jesus even today okay as I've just read to you so the rabbis of his time received him not but Jesus continued in that passage John 5 43 if another shall come in his own name him ye will receive. So brothers and sisters, this one is about to come according to these rabbis. All right. So the following is a quote from a video uh, about the Noahide laws and related by Dr. Pigeon. Quote, the Noahide laws, the seven laws of Noah, are Jewish supremacist laws from the Babylonian Talmud. Important to know that and command non-Jews, which are, i.e., Gentiles, to set up, notice the words, set up, courts, which are at least theoretically supposed to execute non-Jews who do not follow Jewish strictures. The Jewish Chabad Lubavitch movement declare that Noahide laws are laws which all people of the world are obligated to follow. All people of the world are obligated to follow these laws. <laughs> all right. This movement declares that these laws are mandatory for all nations and that we must all submit to the one, listen to this, one true God of the Talmud, Notice they want the Gentiles to submit to the God of the Talmud, the same book that speaks blasphemous things against our Lord Jesus, okay? Which places our attention back on the ones teaching these laws, right? The rabbinic Jews, right? The orthodox teachers of the Talmud. The Antichrist, all right? You might as well just call them Antichrist because that's what they are. The Antichrist, I might add, that there are many of these antichrists as John as first John 2:18 states little children it is the last time and as ye have heard that antichrist shall come even now there are many antichrists you got that even now even back then there are many antichrists all right could be that that's the mystery of iniquity all right there's a lot of things that point to something that is iniquitous happening back in the day, even then. And now we're pointing to these antichrists that are many, even back in the day. All right, Many rabbis, many rabbinic teachers, many uh, Talmud-believing Jews. All right? Okay. So in Daniel 7.25 it states, he, the Antichrist, shall think to change times and laws. Laws? Like the ones which all people of the world are obligated to follow? Those laws? The Noahide laws? The next thought is more in line with what these laws are. are. By this I mean the Ten Commandments are of God. All right? But the Ten Commandments are of God, but these laws, these Noahide laws, are of men. And the Ten Commandments given to Moses were a covenant, and that's in Deuteronomy 
4.13, and he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. All right, and what did he do that with? God's finger. God's finger wrote that. Not man's finger, but God's finger. So a covenant between God and men, right? Then, what are these Noahide laws? A covenant with man. And what are, what are these men that are bringing forth these Noahide laws? Antichrist. So it's a covenant with men, and that's the Antichrist, not God. All right? So now we have clarity. One is a covenant of God given to men, the Ten Commandments. One is a covenant with men in place of God's covenant that requires all the world to obey them. Now it's very clear that this is what will be the judicial system of the world order during the tribulation. And it is happening now, brothers and sisters. Now that we now that we can see the Noahide laws as an existing covenant, what does Daniel 9, 27 look like? Keep in mind 1 John 2, 22, Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist. One of the reasons why Jesus said in John 8, 44, when speaking to the rabbis of his time, Ye are of your father the devil and the lust of your father ye will do so Daniel 9 27 and he Antichrist the one that comes in his own name right and that these Antichrist rabbinical Jews will accept in his own name as their Messiah shall confirm make strong or stronger and Brothers and sisters, I did a search. When I came to this point, make strong. Let me type in, you know, the Google and uh, find out what, you know, the definition of make strong is. And the first thing that came up was make America strong again. All right? Not saying anything about that. It's just place it where you have the thought, okay? Make America strong again. And a strong covenant made stronger, all right? You know that the the president, uh, man that he is, is susceptible as sin happens, and all of us are sinners and fall short. But every president that has been in since 1992 has, uh, when they signed the the uh, Education Day law into uh, a, as a bill and signed it into law. This was George H. W. Bush. That Education Day bill is this Noah I laws, brothers and sisters. So they're on the books of the United States right now. So anyway, back to the thing. Make America strong again. That's what I came up with first. But the definition in the Cambridge English Dictionary for strong is this. Powerful. Having or using great force or control. All right? That's what make strong is. A form of force or control, able to support a heavy weight or force. The definition of covenant, to make strong a covenant. The definition of covenant is an agreement, usually formal, between two or more persons to do or not, or not do something spe specified with many. Get it? So there's, he's going to make stronger a covenant with many, all right? Think antichrists. Think about the many antichrists. As John says in John 2.18, 1 John, uh, John 2.18, Ye have heard that antichrist shall come. Even now are there many antichrists. There are many Talmud-believing Jews and rabbis for one week, seven years. So, what we have here is an agreement made stronger after the rapture of the church with the many antichrists that are in agreement with this covenant between men who will rule over in the new who who will rule over in the new world 
in this order by these laws. Brothers and sisters, these Noahide laws are brought out by people who do not believe in our Lord Jesus. And so, we read in Isaiah 28, 15. Because ye have said, who's the ye? <laughs> these rabbinic Jews. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant. An agreement with death. And what is that? To kill by decapitation any who will not adhere to these seven rabbinic Noahide laws. And with hell are we at agreement. No, the son of perdition is literally the child of hell. When the overflowing scourge, which will be this overflowing scourge, will come, and when will it come? It will be at the midpoint of the tribulation when the spirit of Apollyon is released from the bottomless pit and possesses the man of sin, and that's when he becomes this son of perdition. All right, The one who came and was accepted three and a half years earlier, you understand, as their Messiah. This is three and a half years earlier, which would have been the rapture. That happened. Then they go on for three and a half years to the midpoint where Apollyon comes up and possesses, right, the man of sin, making him the son of perdition, the child of hell. So and when this overflowing scourge shall pass through, and I'm seeing this as the guillotines will be active, it shall not come unto us. Why? Why is that? Why are the Jews saying this? Because it shall not come unto us. Why? Because the Noahide laws are not for the Jews, but for the Gentiles. The time of the taking of the Mark 666 and worshiping their Messiah or be executed. That's that. That's where it is. Right in the midpoint. Right when that man stands up, take, breaks the, uh, the covenant with them. All right. And then from then on, worship him. All right. It's all about worshiping this Messiah as God. Taking his mark. And if you don't, you're executed. So, these say, For we have made lies our refuge. Remember, who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? And under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Yes, the falsehood of the Talmud and of things that they believe, okay, up to this very day. Many antichrists. So, verse 16 of chapter 28 in Isaiah says this, and this is good news. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, and a sure foundation. He that believeth us, brothers and sisters, shall not make haste, shall not be quick. All right? In other words, anyone that would believe after the rapture, okay, he that believeth after the rapture shall not be hasty and throw that away because they're going to know that the rapture happened. They're going to know something changed and they're going to know that the world is now operating under one world order. All right. So the Jewish Messiah will come, but according to the scriptures, one of the most important being 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, and then 8, which tells us that that day will not come until there is a departure first. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then, in verse 8, that wicked will be revealed. Okay? Okay. Which is an indication. Uh, and and the, another thing, too, I just saw it as I'm reading this and thinking about it. It's also as an apostasy. So the falling away is the uh, non-belief in uh, Christ Jesus. All right? So there's also that. There's people that will fall away when these Noahides are uh, implemented as well after the rapture. Okay, but the rapture has to happen. It's the escape. That's what we all look forward to. Don't let anyone tell you that there's not an escape because it is. And the, the place that it happens is before the seven years starts. All right. Just, just take it for what it says. Whenever you have a question, take the Bible literally. And we know that the weak has to start. There has to be this making strong of a covenant. All right? And it's coming, brothers and sisters. Man, is it close. All right? But it won't happen. The making strong of this covenant will not happen. Remember, I'm looking at it differently than the peace agreement. Okay? All right? That's important. 
But this covenant is more apt to be the confirmation of this Noahide law covenant, replacing the Ten Commandments. All right, and it's only for the Gentiles. That's important to keep in mind. All right, so not saying that the the peace plan is no you know bearing on where we're at and watching and and realizing that when they divide the land, which is any peace plan nowadays is going to divide the land of Israel. In fact, if you want to be really technical about it, the land of Israel has been divided many years now, okay? The UN didn't give them back the original land that God gave uh, to Abraham, all right? All right? Or to Jacob. So, it's, it's, you know, you can get off on all kinds of tangents. All right, so anyway... So the wicked will be revealed after the rapture. So this indicates to all of us just how close we are today. As the Talmud-believing Orthodox Antichrist Jews, that's the only thing you can say about them, they don't believe in Christ. What is that? They are a liar who do not believe the, that Jesus Christ is Lord. They are Antichrist. And there are many of these. All right? So Antichrist Jews are telling the Gentile nations of the world that their Messiah is about ready to appear and we're looking at it possibly to happen <laughs> a few days from now Purim all right which is what a week and a half today is the sixth so we got a week and you got yeah two weeks two weeks until the eve of Purim the 20th of March which is spring as well we got brother Stephen Fletcher pointing out right to that day okay <laughs> right to that time 20 21 22 all right so, you know, I love brother. I love you, brother Stephen, and uh, thank thank God for all of your study and work and and your uh, the way of getting there. We're all we're all getting different aspects, but here, look at this as the, as the covenant that will be made strong once the rapture happens, because the new world order needs <laughs> they need a uh, they need a structure or a, a law that people need to abide by. So the very same rabbis that are telling us th that Messiah is here and will appear soon are the ones that will soon be teaching the Noahide laws to the Gentile nations of the world. The 70 rabbis, nascent Sanhedrin, that are openly stating that they want to replace the UN as a world governing body, as it has failed. Of course we know that. The UN does not have any teeth, but with this, which will come at the time of the reestablishment of the 70-member Jewish Sanhedrin and the implementation of the seven laws of Noah will be a covenant that will be made stronger and agreed to by all the world through the many antichrists headed by the one, the Messiah, and become a control mechanism used by the new world governing body of the Antichrist. This all closely relates to what, to what they are saying about the Messiah that will soon be revealed. And we know that he cannot be revealed until the he that is now letting, which is the restrainer, be removed out of the way. So praise God, brothers and sisters. And just a side note, just as a, something to kind of think about, on April 10th, 2017, an article came out, and I don't remember what I was just clicked on it to see if it was true and it certainly is but Trump's son-in-law uh, senior advisor Jared Kushner has reportedly hired Josh Raffle this was back then all right back in 2017 a director of a mov movie called The Purge all right and we know that that and that's that movie where one night a year it was legal to kill all right so to lead, this is this is he's hired to lead the communications of this new office named White House Office of American Innovation. And the question is, brothers and sisters, why create this office and place this guy as the head of it? That's the question. So I love you, brothers and sisters. God bless you. Have a good day. Uh, our Lord is at hand. He's close. He's as close as your breath. When you breathe out, say Jesus. He's right there. That's as close as he is. He'll never leave you or forsake you. This time that's coming is the, the most 
uh, it's a time such as never has been on the face of the earth. There's never been the whole earth as seven billion people on the earth uh, disappearing. You know, not all of them, but you know, a time of, of the disappearing of, of millions around the world all at one moment. Then the new world order taking over instantly, you know, and, and bringing about this Mashiach, all right, and him ruling for three and a half years, at which point the, 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 the spirit comes up out of the bottomless pit, inhabits or possesses this man's body. Then he says, he worship me. He stands in that newly built temple, says, worship me, takes away the sacrifice and oblation. No need to do that anymore because he's God, all right? Take my mark and worship me or else, all right? That's the bottom line, and that will be the rules through these Noahide laws as the uh, law, the first rule of it, or the first law of it is idolatry. And it talks about anybody that worships any other god than the one true god of the Talmud will be uh, accused and... and uh, sentenced to death by decapitation. So that's the bottom line. So Brother John, watch me for that great day. Love you all. God bless you.